Thank you for joining us on Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in San Mateo, California, where I am delighted to be joined by Denise Pearson, Chief Marketing Officer at Snowflake, along with Jessica Hawk, Corporate Vice President Data, AI, and Digital Applications Product Marketing at Microsoft. Such a pleasure to be with both of you here today. So great to be here with you, Jessica and Ryan. Oh, thank you for having me. The top news story in tech for 2024 remains Gen AI and LLMs. From your collective seats, what's your primary focus as we enter 2024? Denise, let's start with you. I mean, it's clear that all eyes would be on AI and Gen AI in 2024 as well. It's really at the center of all the conversations you know, we are having you know, with our customers. And organizations also understand that you can't have an AI strategy before you have a data strategy. So there's really a big urgency for organizations right now to build that data foundation so they can take full advantage of Gen AI um, technology. And also companies uh, understand that it's not only about using their own data. They need to be able to access data in real time from their partners or data providers. And if they're on the snowflake, they can do that without any new silos or new data copies you know, being created. And last year, uh, we made a number of announcements in regards to new product enhancements when it comes to you know, generative AI and, and LLMs. And this year, we're going to see really the general availability of those uh, solutions. So we're excited about that. Thank you, Denise. Jessica, we'll love your perspective as well. Well, it was about a year ago that we brought Azure OpenAI service to market. Um, it was a very busy holiday period for us at Microsoft. And honestly, it's not that often that the work that we do becomes around the dinner table conversation, but there's no question at the end of November when ChatGPT came to, to the world, there's a rapid desire to lean in, to accelerate, to uh, take advantage of the technologies and capabilities because it is just such a game-changing experience. And the fact that it was public-facing and it was in everybody's hands from kids to grandparents made it real, really fast. And so if I think about 23, it was very much just what is it? Why is it different? Why does it matter? 24, it's putting these things, you mentioned general availability. There's been a ton of experimentation with what's possible in 23, and 24 is when we're gonna see the march to production for some of these applications. So I think it's really, it's gonna become very much about, okay, we got that there's a new modality here, and this is really interesting and it's fun. How's it gonna actually impact my business? And what you said about connecting it to the data, that is the key thing that I think we all came to understand in 23 was in of itself, the, the foundational models are very intelligent and they know a lot. They can help you bake cookies. There's all kinds of things they can do. But from a business context, it's absolutely when you rag your own data or your partner supply chain, lots of different data sources into these models where you can create unique business value. And so, you know, there's been some studies that have come out recently. IDC just came out with one that said, for every dollar of investment in AI, organizations are seeing three and a half dollars back in terms of value. That's a pretty astounding growth stat. And the thing that they also noted was the pace. It's all, it's again, all about pace. You know, we had a similar moment when cloud came alive where there was maybe interest, but perhaps not, I wouldn't say that everyone rushed to get there. I think a lot of folks experienced that pause and the negative effects that came from that pause. And so you have leaders now, these people are you know, 10, 20 years older now, who are saying, I'm not gonna make that mistake. So there's been a real, I wanna go fast and I wanna work at this problem like directly, aggressively across the whole organization. And so that came through in this IDC survey as well. They said, they're seeing projects going to production in 14 months. And for those of us who live in the data and AI world, like that's a pretty good schedule. So. Rapid adoption, value is showing up clear as day, and people are moving fast and having success. I love to hear it, Jessica. 2024 starting off strong. Denise, I want to ex examine the partnership between Snowflake and Microsoft. Big investment last year with Snowflake increasing its partnership with Microsoft. Can you walk us through the key takeaways? No, I think it really starts you know, with the customer, and during the past you know, year especially, we've seen an increased demand from our customers to really build the data foundation on um, Snowflake and, and Microsoft. So on our side, we're really significantly increasing our investments in the partnership. You know, we've been um, really increasing the number of first party integrations that we have, you know, with, with Microsoft. And also with that comes also educational, you know, of our customers. So uh, 
We are doing a lot of joint uh, educational programs you know, together. And just recently we did this lab series on how to use Snowflake with open AI services. And over 10,000 data scientists and data professionals attended those. So it's clear that there's a big demand, big interest. We're also seeing many of our joint partners in the ecosystem, the services providers, really developing you know, joint solutions specifically for uh, industries. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be an exciting year ahead. Great to hear about the impact, Jessica. Would you like anything to add there? Well, I would just say, I, I just want to say thank you for the, the partnership investment, particularly when I look at what you're doing to connect our products together. Because we can go to market together, we can do customer stories together, but at the end of the day, somebody's got fingers on keyboard and they're trying to get something done. And when your engineering teams and our engineering teams work together to create in-product connectivity between Snowflake and things like you know, the Azure environment all up, the integration with Power BI is spectacular, the integration with Data Factory. Of course, you brought Azure OpenAI into the solutions that you offer. We've just, we've just massively accelerated our customers' chances for success and the pace at which they'll find that success. So it's been a great, a great first year of this more expanded strategic, to, um, strategic partnership. Thank you, Jessica. I want to dive into this a little bit deeper. How is the data cloud allowing your ecosystem the ability to do more? Sure. Well, I think there's no question, and it really kind of reflects back to what Denise said earlier. It's the era of AI, and data is the fuel for AI. And so customers have absolutely, as this last year has gone by, come to appreciate how important their investments in a really solid data foundation are. And I would say there is a a increased sense of urgency, even and even when we think about some data estates that have been sitting on prem for decades, and there's been kind of this, it's not broke, I don't think I want to touch it kind of mentality, very rapidly shifting to, no, I need a modern, fully scalable data estate solution. And so Snowflake on Azure for sure is one of those solutions that our customers are so eager to use. And so connecting the data estate to the AI opportunity is, is for sure one. But also, as much as we love AI, there are still just good old fashioned, I need better analytics, I need better reporting, I need better data-driven decision-making with BI. And you know, fun fact, the Snowflake serves more data through Power BI than any other BI tool on the market. So that's an investment that we've been making together for years. But when you combine all of these things together, so now there's this ability to have this modern data state to bring all these things together, to put that AI capability into that data and then surface that information back out through Power BI. It's a really compelling package that I think a lot of customers are seeing value from. And so, you know, maybe two examples that we've seen recently. First is my favorite mac and cheese company, Kraft Heinz. I have young children. We do a lot of Kraft Heinz in the house. Um, who they went on this journey and it did accelerate their investments in modernizing their data state. And I think I've seen something, I, I want to say 3 trillion data asset center management as part of this work. So those are some pretty big numbers. Um, and they're, of course, very successfully seeing this rapid adoption because the stack is so well integrated. Um, and then State Street, doing a lot of innovative work with, between Snowflake and Azure and the Azure OpenAI service to deliver better insights to their uh, wealth managers. and. Again, taking some of the manual day-to-day -day work out of uh, their folks who are talking with their customers out of the equation and putting that really, really allowing them to focus on having great customer interactions. Thank you for those insights, Jessica. Denise, Snowflake expanded its partnership with Microsoft last year. Can you walk us through the key takeaways of the partnership? No, but the main takeaway the customer should have is that we are doubling down on, on Snowflake's partnership you know, with Microsoft. And we're making these investments in much better first party integration between our different you know, new products. You know, our customers have been asking for that. You know, we're, we're delivering on that. And the other big piece is around you know, education. This is not just about technology. Everyone is looking for the know-how on how to do this. So we're going to really uh, invest more in those educational programs together. And again, there's a big growing ecosystem of services providers and other solutions provider that are really delivering solutions that are built on Snowflake and Microsoft, especially sort of in the industry segment. So a couple of key priority industries is really, you know, financial services, manufacturing, healthcare, you know, and then retail. So 
again, I could not be more excited about you know our partnership, and I, I just really look forward to all the things we're going to do together this coming year. So thank you. We, I think we're on a great path. I think we've made a tremendous amount of progress in just this first year. I think the next year is going to be even, even more amazing. I think we were smart in creating some programs to make it really easy for us to deliver on the promise of what does the customer want to choose to do with their data estate. And we all know there are many solutions and customers are incredibly, incredibly intelligent and great at picking the right tool for their set of use cases. And so we did some things within our, our joint sales teams to re reduce friction, to make it really easy for the teams to feel like they're jointly incentivized and so we can have a truly customer first uh, sales engagement experience. And to me, that's one of the best things about this partnership. I love leaning into Microsoft's position as a platform company made up of a lot of collections of different products, some of which we write the code for ourselves and some of which we, we partner with great companies like Snowflake to, again, just give our customers the best possible choice. Thank you for those insights. Before we wrap, Jessica, is there any advice you'd like to share with the audience about how Microsoft is empowering customers to achieve more with AI? You know, as I mentioned before, the adoption pace is high. Um, I've seen, you know, thinking about um, an event that we run every year called the CEO Summit. We bring CEOs from all over the world to Redmond for a few days. And, and it, as I think about what we did in 23 at that event, it was very much still about just explaining the art of the possible. I think as we're moving from testing and, you know, the development cycles and really truly into production in 24, you know, knowing that Microsoft is always thinking about the responsible use of AI, it is our top job. So we put a lot of effort and investment into making sure that our customers have not just a, a set of principles to think about how they do that, because of course we've always had those principles and um, I think you've heard Brad Smith and others talk about them quite a bit, but now the next wave is really tools to make the principles real. Because it, again, at the end of the day, somebody is writing some, a piece of software. And so principles guide the thinking, but they don't necessarily guide the software development. And so there's been a ton of investment into our Azure AI services around the responsible use of Gen AI. So our content safety service, all of these things that Snowflake can easily bring forward for their customers uh, so that when they're moving forward with their Gen AI ambitions, that they, they have that confidence that they're doing it in a safe and responsible way. Well, thank you. Such a pleasure sitting down with both of you in exciting next chapter for Snowflake and Microsoft. Great to have you on Data Cloud now. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green. I'll see you soon. Thank <music> you.